Okay, so sir, I'm going to do this uh, uh, talk. I'm just laying out the format of the talk today. I have a certain uh, some questions for you, which I would be asking you throughout uh, our conversation. Okay. Some of them are going to be a little bit okay. on your professional advice and, you know, on certain technical subject matters in which you are definitely a, a way more experienced person than most of us are. And the other ones are going to be just to know you a bit closer and it's going to be the questions are going to be from your life, your personal choices and, you know, why there are certain things which were. And then at the end of this particular segment, I'm going to take up some audience questions. The talk is going to be about 45 to 60 minutes. I know we have consumed a good 15 minutes to, you know, set the entire uh, technology in. But, you know, 45 to 60 minutes is what we are looking at right now. So um, I, I, I hope, sure. uh, you know. That's we we can you know uh, put our uh, audiences uh, in in hot spot by the end of it and have some amazing questions sure sure go ahead go okay. ahead this is interesting so my my <laughs> first question to you sir i know that you have actually uh, sat on the other side of the table and interviewed so many people and you always ask that question why mba I think I'm going to take this opportunity and ask you I from the other never, side. I never used to. I never used to. I never used to ask this question why MBA because the person has applied, and he has come for the interview, and that means he is serious uh, to pursue MBA. So I never used to ask these questions. Uh, I used to start by asking, uh, "Tell me something about yourself which you have." not put down in this uh, application form and uh, which is so unique to you you know tell us something about yourself and uh, the person would be a little uh, hesitant and he would start by saying uh, i am so and so that's what they have practiced you see in front of the mirror they would have practiced in their suit or in their saris or in their uh, whatever the finery and i used to say no no that is okay that i know i can read but now you tell me something about yourself which is not there here People used to get a little nervous at that particular stage because afterwards, when this pagalguy.com and all those things came, there was somebody who had written a comment, be careful of the bearded gentleman. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, coming to your question, why this, why I took up law? I'm not really sure why it just happened. Uh, when I was in the 10th standard, I had a long chat with my father. My father at that time said that he could not afford uh, uh, engineering because there was just uh, two colleges in our district entire district had two colleges one was a payment seat one was the rec so rec was very difficult to get but uh, the payment seat was not easy for us we were not that rich yet you know. and therefore i said okay i'll pursue commerce i'll see what i can do and then i pursued commerce somewhere along the line uh, my mentors said that i should go in for ias I was not very sure about that. I gave up the idea right at the very beginning and didn't show much interest in it. Then I reached a uh, final year of uh, BCom and uh, I finished and I didn't know what to do. You know, it's that situation where you had five years of grand, great time. In fact, the last three years were fantastic because BCom, you know, it is actually you can finish off the course in about six months. The entire BCom can be done in six months. But the university drags it for three years. So you have a great time, fantastic time. You have a ball. You have you make a lot of friends and you watch movies. You go for, you know, that time we used to go to theaters to watch movies, bunk classes, uh, hang around outside some girls' college and, you know, all those stupid things that you normally do, which you put down to experience and, you know, you don't regret it. Uh, then you come out of become and you wonder what you're going to do next and all the nerds the you know the so-called you know the very um, uh, brilliant types will say oh we're going to do ca and somebody says no i'm going to do a cost accountant i'm going to be a chartered uh, secretary and all and here you are you don't know what you're going to do you know you're lost and then you say okay fine let me try you know like i can speak so let me be maybe become a lawyer and at the same time you know my sister was already you know getting on with ca so she said, you know, don't waste time. You also register for CA. So we had this classes for law, which were in the morning and in the evening. So in the daytime, we could do CA. And I pursued both. And once I got into it, I said, okay, I'm going to be very, very serious about it. Okay. And uh, uh, I passed law 
six months before I passed CA. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. tough, very tough, because you had to get up in the morning, go for classes in the morning, yeah. then go for uh, training under a chartered accountant, then go back in the evening again for classes, come back in the night, study, go to sleep. So it became a routine. It became a hermit's life. You know, I was like a hermit. I never met my friends. I never caught they, they. I told them not to contact me. I said after three years I will contact. And whoever remains will remain. Whoever doesn't remain will. I mean, but there was one chap who stuck around. Uh, he was uh, quite close. I mean, we were, we were very close uh, to each other. And he used to come home, uh, inquire about whether I required anything, whether you know I required some book or whatever. You know, he used to come and he used to be completely uh, all for you know my passing and all that. So it was. Sir, as hindsight, the, it was fun. Sir, as as the. Uh, uh, the saying goes that you know it takes a lifetime to become a human, but once you become a lawyer, there is no going back. What do you think about it? No, I realized that as soon as I passed and I started, you know, going a little, doing a little bit of legal work, and I found that <laughs> uh, there's a difference between you know there's just uh, one letter difference between liars and lawyers. And I said, I'm going to object that. <laughs> This is not what I want to really do. Uh, so I said, I'll become a solicitor. I'll, I won't go to court in practice. Uh -huh. I'll help people out with their cases, whatever uh, people have. And you know, and my concentration took, my, my work took me through to, to alternate dispute resolutions. Sure. And uh, I started uh, uh, making people go through this and telling them that this is better than going to the court, uh, mediate. So don't while, get involved in while we're talking about alternate dispute resolution, and I know this is very early uh, in the conversation to toss a technical question to you, but I think this is an opportunity uh, opportunity for me to break that question. That you know, in our community, you see there are so many founders and you know startups which are happening, and um, there would be so many disputes which are coming between the partners and the founders of startups. So as an alternate dispute resolution professional or having a keen exposure and insight into that, would you have some points for the community to keep in mind when you know they start businesses to, to make sure that there are least amount of disputes? And number two, if there are any disputes, how to resolve them you know, on, on, a, on, on a friendly note rather than being on, on, on a bitter side? Over to you, sir. Actually, at uh, IMK, uh, uh, Professor Debushi's strategy and I had a plan of setting up an ADR center and that would be oh. only for our students who were numbering now nearly 6,000 students would have gone out. I'm not very sure about 8, the number. 8,000 plus already uh, till now. Yes. Yeah. So, so I said that it is a good idea for us to set up an ADR center and that would be the first ADR center planned by any IIM. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it never took off because of a uh, few reasons which I I cannot mention on uh, <laughs> live TV. But uh, it was always there at the back of our minds that we should do it. And maybe not on campus, but maybe in Kochi. Mm -hmm. uh, but then things didn't work out for uh, various reasons. And uh, still it is at the back of my mind that uh, we could do something because when you have 8,000 students, I'm sure that many of them would have some problems in startups and, you know, in getting into agreements, in having problems. I know many people give me a call and consult. So I thought maybe that was something that I wanted to do, but it didn't work out. Uh, back home, when uh, my one of my very close friend became the president of the Chamber of Commerce, he was after me to start an ADR center for the Chamber of Commerce. And I agreed because not because of uh, uh, anything, but because of uh, friendship and because I, we, I've been in the Chamber of Commerce for a very long time. I know most of the gentlemen there and they also said, you know, please help us out. You know, so, so we set up an ADR center and uh, we... Uh, the first thing that I did was I set, set up the rules, regulations and all that and uh, we had an inauguration of the EDR center and then COVID stuck. <laughs> now during the COVID days I have sat and written the book on arbitration and uh, now I am busy doing the editing of it and I thought that writing a book was easy but uh, it is uh, tough, really tough. 
because uh, you draft it in a particular way and then you go to the printer and the printer says this is not this is not the page size so the page size will change so it will be a demi size or some size he'll give you and then the whole thing changes so now the table of contents the table of cases where these cases appear all those numbers i have to check and i have to again put it down but we are absolutely looking forward to this book of yours sir i mean i'm i'm pretty sure once it is going to be out maybe we can plan about a book read or you know a summary uh, presentation from you and you know we are no, happy for your knowledge so you know let's see how it goes it is not a novel it is not a thriller it mm -hmm. is a hardcore subject matter and it okay. is for people who want to become uh, arbitrators people who are uh, litigants and students who want to pursue it because uh, i have great hope in uh, arbitration on alternate dispute redressal because our courts are filled you know it is 3.4 uh, crore cases in all the courts i mean i know criminal cases you cannot uh, dispose of in arbitration but there are so many cases of civil nature which could be sorted out through arbitration and arbitration now the government has made it absolutely clear and the rules have been changed the act has been amended and you have to finish it off in 12 months Mm -hmm. and the grounds for uh, you know setting aside the award has also reduced drastically it is it is uh, uh, people are not aware so i think you know educating the people is very important now I, I, right. i have educated my members and they are saying that okay fine we didn't know this so now that if it is there we will include it in our uh, uh, agreements and we'll come to the adr center so I, I, uh, I only thing is that sir. the lawyers are very angry with me No, that's all right. You know, because uh, if, with legal profession, I mean, uh, the litigation is one field, but you know, alternate dispute resolution is also a very, very big one. And you know, probably this uh, the takeaway. If I might just summarize what we have just discussed, and for our viewers, an al alternate dispute resolution is a very good approach to include in your contracts uh, for any of the startup, you know, issues or situations or um, any disruptions. Uh, so that you can you know kind of end it on a sweet note and also just for an information many of the high courts do have a specific seat or a, a small office called the alternate dispute resolution officer so there's definitely one in the high court of delhi and one can actually pay a very little amount and do that and i'm pretty sure that you know viewers may not be really aware of such facilities of the courts which are being provided and then of course professor uh, professor arhana is uh here and i'm pretty sure that you know <laughs> he's pretty accessible to pick up the phone and you know have our questions and answers and in uh in place and and we are also waiting for his book uh, to no. come out i always tell my students first send me a whatsapp or an email and i'll reply and then we'll take it from there sure so people will first whatsapp me and then you know ask for a time and then they we chat it out or we talk and now that we have got zoom and you know duo and you know i don't know what how many things will come up i have taken notes sir the rules of the game uh, is noted <laughs> <laughs> so sir yeah. why don't you tell us more about your life and you know i know you briefly talked about your friend and you know uh, the way your family was and uh, certain career choices which you have taken i i it looks like you were a very very mischievous child so tell me what was your favorite childhood punishment i'm going to be really go off beat here no see uh, we had i my father worked in a bank my mother was a housewife after we were born because she was a librarian actually so she worked in a government college she was an assistant librarian and then when we arrived uh, she quit and uh, because of that we had a lot of reading uh, to the love of books was uh, inherited from my, my mother and um, i remember my first book that i read was uh, uh, the mystery of the pantomime cat i still uh, uh, have a copy of it somewhere you know in some uh, hidden somewhere in my this one it was the mystery of the pantomime cat and it was uh, given to me by my sister who was 3 uh, years older to me and she was reading and uh, we became very voracious readers and uh, we had a library uh, used to go to Uh, a good friend uh, who used to turn a blind eye if he gave the books a little late uh, old man nice man and uh, we used to really trip on his library i mean the books that we read was something fantastic unfortunately when we came to maybe the professional life when we started doing ca and uh, uh, law and all that the reading took a back seat 
and uh, after some time you know i was uh, i had actually lost touch with the reading so what i did was uh, every year i make a list of books that i would like to read and i try to f- finish at least four five books in a year this time i do not know i just told myself that i'm going to read more and uh, it became an obsession and i'm just read quite a few books in the last uh, four five months and uh, Uh, i have given up reading uh, novels because it doesn't make sense now fiction is out non fiction and uh, this time this year to 2020 i decided to read history and uh, particularly i am interested in the wars that uh, people have fought uh, for, for very frivolous sometimes reasons and uh, sometimes you know it's bo- it's very chilling to read how people kill each other i mean i mean that is something which i can't fathom currently i'm watching a 10 part serial on the vietnam war and um, on the sidelines of that i'm also reading a little bit on uh, cambodia kampuchea and i'm reading about pol pot uh-huh. uh, before that i i finished reading uh, about the disintegration of yugoslavia uh-huh. and uh, how people were butchered there and you know those the sabrinitsa uh, camp and uh, you know somehow you know a, a very deep reading of uh, those things uh, just getting the facts right and uh, i'm quite happy with that i mean in reading as picked up so i'm quite happy with the reading part i'm not happy with the deaths that took place in the reading that disturbs me a lot and uh, so, i just uh, feel our audience yes. favorite question most of the time is what are your recommendation on a reading list is there anything uh, or maybe watching list as well because you know you're now reading uh, uh, and watching some series as well so would you like to recommend some so this is the, this is the the, the war on uh, the vietnam war is a 10 part serial which is available on uh, i think even youtube it is uh, takes about 31 hours and uh, um you learn you mean the it's very well done absolutely fantastically done it it moves like a movie you know uh-huh. so i make it a point to watch at least uh, uh, one episode a day uh, in the night when everybody is fast asleep and i just uh, switch on my um, mobile on the mobile and uh, put it on your phones and uh, listen to it and it's really done extremely well i mean i'm hats off to the person who has uh, done it and is a uh, I can't get his name. I'm, I'm very bad at names. Okay, forget it. Uh, you can Google it and you'll find it. And there's a book also which he has written, and uh, uh, it is uh, based on that that they have made the movie. And there are some live shots of the war that goes on, you know. And uh, even it's pathetic. And you have to understand how people have really lost control over what what was supposed to be a war of one year or two years, and uh, went on for so many years and. 58000 youngsters lost their lives uh, americans lost their lives and about 250000 uh, vietnamese lost their life i mean what did they fight the war for ultimately they do not know for what i mean today uh-huh. when you look at it vietnam is opening up and uh, people are moving from china to vietnam to produce and i wonder i mean these are the americans who fought against uh, this same people the vietnamese i mean you lost but anyway you watch it because it gives you a lot of insight into what people think and what people do sure so any recommendations on certain books one should be reading i see i read a book on ebola virus i read a book on sars uh, i read spillover by david colman i think i don't remember the name of the author spillover is a nice book which tells you all about the viruses because uh, uh, when this covid 19 came along uh, somebody i mean we have a local uh, youtube channel which uh, is run by some religious people and they wanted somebody to come and explain covid to them i mean to the audience and they called me i said see i can't uh, i'm not very fluent uh, in konkani i can't find those words this is my mother tongue but i can't find some of the words medical terms and i'm not a doctor so they said no it doesn't matter it's just that you know you read a lot so you read a, you come and tell us about it so i went and i gave a talk about uh, corona virus just that was before corona virus really came into india and there was huge in the viewership i think uh, 10000 people watched the video and uh, i got calls and some people were taking free consultancy from me and the older people used to call me and tell me that you said so and so so and so so do you think we will survive and i said i don't know who will survive who will die but this is what it is 
and we have to be prepared and uh, so i did, i was interested in reading about the viruses uh -huh. so i read this book called spillover and uh, not all of it is uh, there's a lot of medical jargon but some of it is it's written well so some like you know you know about ebola you know about uh, uh, sars uh, there is a uh, uh, other hydra there is uh, it, it talks about viruses uh, hiv aids hn h1n1 so your knowledge improves you know you you, you then then you you say that okay i know about it i know what's going to happen so uh, this is some things which i have done some reading that i did mm -hmm. so you talked about coronavirus and the way it is impacting you know the lives and nobody knows what is going to be uh, there in future so the times are pretty uncertain right now and i know there is a lot of impact which is happening in terms of economy in terms of uh, the education system is also going through a very very different time right now how do you feel about it that this covid situation is going to impact the ways and modes of learning learning i think uh, we are going to look more and more at the uh, online uh, classes mm -hmm. which is not a very good idea i mean i still feel that classroom and uh, uh, mingling with the students and uh, talking to the students face to face uh, standing in the class and giving a lecture is uh, better of course of course there's no no but we don't have a choice so we'll go in for online now online i have my own reservations first and foremost how many people will listen to a one and a half hour lecture online you know i know my students very well i mean i've been doing this for the last 30 years so i know my students very well what they would do is they would uh, maybe pay for the classes and then at the end when there's an exam they will all take all the videos of it and listen to it and uh, you know when you listen to the videos you can also increase the speed you know you can watch it at one and a half times the speed <laughs> provided you can get voice you know, and then make some notes and answer that uh, ubiquitous exam and pass see there are these are <laughs> some of the things which they are inevitable you can't do anything about it i have a class which was scheduled for june 17th for i am visakhapatnam which i can't travel and classes have been pushed forward to august 17th and i think most in all probability it will be done online now online they are not very sure how they are going to do it but uh, i was asking them whether i should record my classes and send them and so that they can play but then they said no it will think about the platform on which we are doing and then we can have question answers also because that's what we do in iim on the ideal platform the internet distant learning platform is uh, now it is very good and you can see the classrooms you know you can see the students wherever they are sitting you can get the questions and you can you know ask the questions answer the questions and you know it is uh, more or less interactive but it's not 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 like classroom you know this this the interaction that uh, what you call what you people used to call a cp classroom participation chamber participation corridor participation uh, closet participation those things are gone you know you won't get people asking uh, asian questions global gas and you know you, you, you I, i i never used to be comfortable with that class participation part at one particular point in time some iams made it compulsory that there should be class participation so you would have people who would ask questions at the very beginning of your class you know five classes you will have one person putting his hand up and asking questions and also that you know uh, he registers in my mind when i am giving him some cp marks and then at the end maybe two three classes you know rapid fire he'll be asking question she or she will be asking questions i remember one girl who called lakshmi i don't know not sure whether she is listening to this but she 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 did it in i am indo you know and then i knew that she was only asking me questions because she wanted a cp then afterwards they said okay it's up to you you give cp or you don't give cp so i removed it i said no there is no cp there is no attendance nothing you but then somebody is on director said no 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 attendance is compulsory you have to have attendance i am not very i am not a i don't advocate attendance if you are uh, if you are paying uh, you decide whether you need to come or not if there is value addition you will come if there is no value addition you will not come so i don't know why uh, go on about attendance when you are paying it paying for it you turn up if you don't want to turn up don't see like it's like i you know a movie theater you have paid for the movie okay then somebody tells you the movie is a flop don't go so you don't go that's it simple the movie goes on no? You have paid for it. You don't get a refund. You know. I I I. You, 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 
I, I definitely read you, sir. I, I know I'm on um, on it with you that, you know, this is going to be probably the new normal. And, you know, the people who are genuinely interested are going to be comfortable with it. And the people who are probably not genuinely interested, the movie goes on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happens even in live classroom also. Just because of the attendance, people turn up in class. If there is no attendance, you'll find, you know, only the people who are interested will come. And that is, I, that is how it should, it should be when you reach that particular level, you know. And many of you would have worked for three years and then come and then there is an attendance. And then people like me are very strict. You don't enter the class after I've called out the attendance. People beg, plead and all that. I mean, I could have been lenient, but then, you know, people see students being students, you give a finger, they'll take the whole arm. <laughs> that's probably the world is. That's probably the world is. I mean, you know, you can't really blame to the students because you know, at the end of the day, they are very innocent human beings like me and my, any other people. My God. Innocent, <laughs> innocent, and students. My God, I have learned a lot from my students. You call them innocent? My God, <laughs> you're joking. <laughs> they look innocent. That is the thing, you know, because when you're young, you can camouflage you, how you look. You know, you can look. Very innocent, very, you know. But, you know, the brain is ticking. You go very close to them, you can actually hear their brain ticking, you know, that you can you can hear the brain making the noise. You, you send a person out of the class and then he comes and meets you and he makes a lot of excuses. You know, how fast and how quickly he makes those excuses and how he puts it across to you, how he, you know, he's got that entire thing, you know. We have made ullu professor. The professor has known that he ullu banana hai. So it's okay. It's all right. It's life. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, sir, what I'm going to really miss, I mean, I know this is going to be the new normal, but I'm really going to miss the ca the campus vibe, the people coming together, and maybe your participation in after mess parties. That's something mm. <laughs> something which I'm going to really, really miss. Uh, I know that you have made a long journey from your hometown to teaching at IMK. How was your first day? And, you know, how was this journey? How What were your experiences? You talked a lot about you know, the students, um, uh, your mode of operation there. How was no, your first I, I, day? See, actually what happened was, and I became a chartered accountant and uh, uh, I had a client which uh, who used to run a college. And I had this uh, mm, small habit of going to the club in the evening and playing cards. Uh, not not gamble actually maybe you know sit there and and this particular uh, priest who run the college was upset that i was going to the club and uh, he used to tell me why you're going to the club is not your age to go to the club you're hardly 25 why do you go to the club and i told him what do i do in the evening you know all that i can do is go home and you know just hang around at home so he said, okay, I'll uh, give you a task. Why don't you teach my students in the evening college? I can't pay you, but uh, if you can teach. So I said, all right, fine. So I went to teach uh, and I had no prior experience at all. I walked into a class and uh, I started teaching accountants. And I liked it. And the students were all from, uh, I had waiters in my class, suppliers, uh, electricians, uh, people who worked for the electricity board. I had auto drivers and uh, that sort of uh, students. And I did my level best to teach them. And they were very grateful. In fact, you know, even now when I walk on the roads, uh, I meet people who, are, who I can't recognize, but they come up to me and uh, talk to me and tell me that you taught me. And I taught for quite some time there in the evening college. And then uh, uh, one fine day I was traveling when I met a person you know, who was uh, from IAM. And uh, we got to talking and then he said, okay, fine, you know, why don't you teach? We need somebody to teach law. And I said, all right, I can teach law, but I don't have a PhD. He says, no, that is okay. There's no, no requirement of a PhD. Can you come over? I said, all right, fine, I can come over. And uh, that is how my journey to IIMK started. And the very first day when I landed in IIMK, it, IIMK was not where it is now. It was in the REC. And... Uh, I had a, uh, uh, yeah, I taught from the second batch. I interacted with the first batch, but the second batch onwards, I, it was a regular course. And uh, in the second batch, I had 14, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 14 or 16 students, one uh, lady candidate and uh, 15 gentlemen. And it was fun. I still remember a few of them. And uh, 
uh, I was, it was an interactive class because there were just so many students. It was fun, really fun. And I found that, you know, people were eager to learn. People wanted to learn a lot of things. But the only thing was that, you know, there was only one class a day and you had to give one lecture and then you had to sit quietly for the whole day. Uh, maybe observe nature and, you know, there's it, it a beautiful place out there. We used to go for long walks. And uh, that's how it started. And a uh, bit went on and on. The teaching, I liked it. Uh, money was not that good at that particular point in time. I mean, that time, I remember the student got a job from IMK. He got a job of uh, about uh, 39 lakhs. The offer was 39 lakhs. And I remember at that time, the director's gross emoluments was 3,33,000 and odd. So you see, the director was leaning on my shoulder and asking me, what is it that he has that we don't have? I said, I'm not very sure. Perhaps youth, uh, because, you know, the, the disparity in wages in salaries was huge. Then things improved, you know. And then somebody realized that you should pay uh, faculty very well. And so faculty was paid very well. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say very well, but well. And uh, that's how it was. So I, since I enjoyed teaching, I said, fine. Now, word spread that, you know, there's a guy teaching over here. He's good. So somebody else invited me. And then somebody else invited me. Somebody else invited. So it became an invitation. And uh, then at a, one particular point in time, about two years back, I decided that it is enough because uh, I was not getting... Uh, a kick out of it in the sense I was doing it, but it was, I was not getting, you know, I was, I think maybe there was a fatigue factor. And therefore what I did was I just uh, cooled, cooled off for some time. I just stopped teaching. I just took one or two courses here and there. And uh, maybe one, I mean, now onwards, I'll go back to teaching. I'm not very sure <laughs> who will invite me. And if they do invite, I'll go back. But uh, uh, otherwise, I'm going to plunge myself totally into arbitration. Sure. Uh, I have been asked to give series of lectures on arbitration. So that will be the mainstay for some time. Uh, plus, I am running an engineering college. I am on the governing board of an engineering college and I visit the engineering college every week, at least two to three days I spend there. Uh, so that's also a very good experience, uh, learning experience, how to run a college, how to run an institution. So there's a lot of, my plate is full. So. So that's, of course, there are good, some good projects and upcoming objectives and, you know, uh, challenges that you're working on. So at this juncture, sir, I'm going to take a minute and, you know, announce to the audience, the audience that, you know, we are okay to take the questions. So while I complete a couple of more questions with sir, please feel free to, you know, type in your questions and send in uh, the comment section. And I'm going to take a few of them uh, at the end, uh, probably in five to 10 minutes of the time. Sir, um, yeah. While we come back to our conversation, uh, uh, we, we uh, many of us follow you on Facebook, and I see that there are two accounts uh, on Facebook that you manage, and then you also have an equally dazzling uh, Instagram profile. Mm. And uh, you have these beautiful uh, words of wisdom which you keep posting uh, with the hashtag, and it's quite a ha interesting hashtag. I hope you have already got it copyrighted. Just saying. So let <laughs> us know that you know. When are we uh, going to expect a pocketbook of wisdom on hashtag just say? I wanted to no, know. See, first and foremost, why two accounts on Facebook? At one particular point in time, Facebook said that you have 5,000 friends and you can't add more. So then somebody suggested you open another account and we'll all become friends over there. Now, what happened was uh, some people, okay, new people became friends on that and then some of these people who were here thought that that account is the one which is official and went and became friends over there. So now, you know, I've got people who are friends on both. So what I do is I post and, I, you know, uh, tag the other account and uh, post it. Now, just saying is, uh, has got a history, you know. Um, in the initial stages when uh, I think I was introduced to Orkut first, if you all remember, there was a, there was a, uh, what you call Orkut. I'm not very sure whether many of you remember. Uh, it was introduced to me when I was an IAM indoor and uh, some students of mine said, sir, why, why aren't you on Orkut? Okay, fine, I was on Orkut. 
then facebook came along and they said why not on facebook and then i was tired you know people were writing saying that you know this is what i did today this is what i did that and so i said okay fine let me get on with this uh, at least enlightening people and i started this hashtag of just say now as it grew in popularity uh, some older friends of mine who had uh, who are not on facebook or they are not technically uh, savvy decided to send their uh, any, anything that they read somewhere they message me and they say that why don't you make a, a just saying out of this so it became a habit you know you started doing uh, just saying Uh, even now i have got an aunt of mine and she must be about uh, the late 70s so if anything that she reads and she finds something which is very nice she'll message me and she'll say that this i found today in uh, when i was reading why don't you make a poster out of it she thinks that that is a poster that i do so i make a poster out of it and i put it there and i put just say okay fine so everybody is happy then i got tired you know i got very tired of doing it and uh, i decided not to continue and i put up actually i put up a notice saying that i'm stopping this you know i'm tired and you know i need a break uh that didn't work well with a few people and i realized the importance of this just saying only after i got a call late in the night it was well past midnight when i got a call and uh, the person on the other side said that why did you stop and i was taken aback i said uh, what do you mean why did i stop in minutes of course you know it's my right to stop or not to st- to continue or not to continue but he said uh, the voice said that look uh, i'm a person who had contemplated on ending my life and uh, your uh, just saying has given me a lot of help to very difficult times and if i don't find you know if i find a little uh, the day has not been too good i just go back to your just saying and read it so please don't stop it at least for the sake of some of us i mean at least for his sake that actually startled me i didn't sleep the whole night i didn't know that that uh, just saying had reached that particular stage and then i continued i mean now once in two days at least i try to put something and uh, i know that people are going through very difficult times now so a word kind word is always uh, helpful and uh, i tried to put one message at least a day or uh, once in two days i put a message particularly if i'm traveling or i'm occupied i try to put a message once in two days and uh, that's the way i feel that i'm doing a little bit of service to my students and my friends my well wishers my guides my philosophers uh, i thought that such is such deep experiences way. such deep experiences and you know, so when we, i i know that you have seen it all and you have had such deep experiences uh is there any blog or uh, any any particular forum where we can read you more often beyond the character limitation of just saying no 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 see what happened was i wanted to write a novel and this has been a, a, a work in progress for many years this time i was a bit serious and i just did a few pages and i sent it across to an old friend of mine he is uh, older and wiser and he had one look at uh, the first chapter and he said that uh, this cannot be published uh, this is going to create problems for you and uh, this is not i mean people won't take it very kind- kindly though it was hilarious so i don't know in what other way can i write because if i can't tell my story in the way in which i want it to be told i don't think i should write so i just uh, put it back uh, it's on the back burner again i not even back burner it's gone into the refrigerator uh, people keep asking me why you don't write and all i i don't know nowadays people are so i don't know small things they get upset they are uh, there's a lot of anger in the world you know i do not know why people are very angry uh, i i for this anger was is always there let me tell you even when i was very young there was anger and this amita bachchan became uh, came up in uh, as the uh, angry young man you know all his movies he was the young, angry young man i don't know what he was angry about uh, so <laughs> i was amazed that you know the anger is still there maybe we'll we'll filter the debris around the anger and probably take away a lot of good wisdom from you and so at this stage let me ask you you know in your opinion what should be that one value 
inherently everyone in the world should live by like up today I and mean, in today's time see we 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 should know that uh, we have a very limited time on the face of the earth okay if you look at it from my point of view your life is a book okay your life is a book and as someone said the first chapter the first page and the last page is already written the first page was written when, and the last page is written already written when you are going to die just that you don't know when so it's a journey between these two pages you know the birth and the death what are you going to fill up your book with you know are you going to fill up your book with hatred are you going to fill up your book with uh, you know uh, uh, your wealth which you are not going to take anyway when you die are you going to fill up your book with kindness are you going to fill up your book with love are you going to fill up your book with laughter this is important you know i mean for me laugh without uh, you know a day without laughter is a wasted day that is why you know in class i used to actually make an effort to keep people uh, uh, you know humor came naturally to me let me tell you i didn't have to practice i didn't have to come to class with jokes you know in my pocket and you know then tell about the joke no it came naturally if i found some situation i used to it came naturally to be very sarcastic there and some people used to call me professor saki and uh, but the point is that I, i i my principle is that if you don't laugh a day is wasted so today uh, i had a fair share of my laughter today because one of my very close friend has goofed up very badly so first i laughed and then i tried to help him out and he's telling me why are you laughing i said i'm laughing because today i have not laughed so first i need to laugh at what you have done you have goofed up badly now the second thing i'm going to pull you out okay so i'll give you some advice and see what what can be done so i feel that laughter is very important absolutely important it's more important than anything else in this world if you are a person who can make people laugh and you can laugh and you can laugh at yourself i think you are a very successful person i don't go by you know degrees i don't go by bank balances i don't go by what car you drive and all if you can't laugh if you can't laugh at yourself you are lost so whatever it is you know now it is a very tough time you know i'm getting calls every day yesterday i went for a meeting of one of my client and you know we're looking at a whole of about 8 crores you know another client who has got about 2 crores of loans to be paid these are people who are uh, who have lost i mean i do not know what is going to happen to them really honestly and uh, in spite of that they warm up when they meet me you know they say that look he has come and you know there's a sense of you know like okay we'll get on with the business but tell us the latest what is the latest what what have you got up your sleeve and uh, i felt sad but at the same time you know you got to help people out and you know sometimes humor is what keeps us alive that is why i said between these two pages of uh, birth and death fill up your pages with love affection help people don't go by uh, you know today's world i'll tell you there are two imposters who who who, who are like viruses in this uh, universe along with covid they are also roaming around one is religion and second is politics sir uh, you know? just saloni this question just popped up you know saloni asks uh, us that what is the biggest lesson covid has taught us and we are still learning that's our first your uh, question which is coming in i i'm just no, able to thank like you saloni to, for uh, that question you know, you know there was a whatsapp which was going around in kerala the church authorities the temple authorities were very happy that there was no liquor and they were telling people that if you have uh, uh, managed without liquor for so many days don't go and have liquor so one of those old veteran drunkards retorted for so many days the churches are not open the temples are not open gods are not there so why should we follow religion and you know that is something which is absolutely valid you know in this particular virus uh, where i mean we are left to ourselves and if we can help each other out uh, we are you know when this covid started i was given a task by the chamber of commerce on the second or third day uh, i think it was the third third fourth day 
uh, I was given the DC, he gave a list of numbers, about 40 numbers, and told, call these people and see whether they're genuine, uh, whether they have uh, received food and what are the facilities that they're enjoying. And I called up these 40 numbers. And I was listening to people who were telling me, we have not eaten in four days. I can hear people crying in the background. And when I finished the call on, on an Excel sheet, I found that there were 2,267 migrant laborers connected to these 40 numbers and they had not eaten. You know, I told my chamber president, what we do is now we hit the road. And we hit the road in, the, in that lockdown. They were not, uh, the police helped us out with a truck. I didn't go personally, but my president and two of his colleagues went with the police and with the district administration and we took rice. We took rice because that's the only thing that we could give at that particular point in time. And we give two kgs of rice per person so that they could last for at least a few days. And that is when I realized that, you know, all this is bunkum, absolutely bunkum. All this well, lip you, service. Sir, that thank, thank you very much for, you know, for, for the great relief uh, effort which you in your individual capacity conducted and with your friends and with your society. No, because, really, this is, no, this is nothing. I mean, I was just, uh, this is nothing. What I've done is nothing because there is a lady here who runs an organization called White Dows. You know, every day she prepares 1,500 meals and goes and distributes them. No, I mean, we are living just for your information, sir. So uh, our community came together and, you know, we uh, did a COVID relief fund and we raised uh, around 28 lakh rupees of rupees and we supported around 18 causes. And, you know, th these were the kind of causes which we have supported. And uh, our alumni is to be really congratulated and thanked for not really congratulated, you know, it, it's a sheer gratitude and thanks that everyone came together and we know as the community as IMK, as the faculty, we all are together in it and we are trying to maximize our efforts. And whatever we are able to do today is probably our, our probably a little bit of privilege that we are able to be in a position to, you know, extend these, uh, you know, relief work for people who are really impacted and on the ground. And I must tell you, thank you very much. And we are very open for, uh, you know, more of such collaborations and, you know, positive stories to be created where people are impacted and, you know, relief work is uh, given out to the people who are on ground. Well, that's what I, you know, uh, Saloni, I wanted to ask, answer Saloni's question. I have realized one thing, you know, when push comes to shove, we are alone. When push comes to shove, we are absolutely alone, I tell you. And that is what I felt when I saw this COVID happening. You know, you know now you die alone. You're buried without even your family members being able to see you. You're set on fire. I mean, you're cremated without anybody meeting you, without anybody seeing you. You, you push comes to shove, you're alone. You've got to realize this and they will stop all this hatred in the world. Why don't we realize that? Here we are fighting it out. You know, you go to Twitter and you find that people are fighting it out. Or some politicians who are enjoying good life. They're fighting it out on uh, on people who are uh, who who don't deserve even a modicum of respect or even a modicum of sympathy. They are rich; they can manage. But here we are fighting. You know, I have been kicked out of WhatsApp groups by my uh, classmates because I speak like this. Because I said that I don't tow any political line. I don't like politicians. If politicians were so great, then the country would have improved. The world would have improved. You, the, uh, they wouldn't have fought a war with Vietnam. They wouldn't have been disintegration of Yugoslavia with the death of so many people. So you have always always been very vocal about your views on certain things, you know, and this actually brings me to a closure question. You know, when I go to your LinkedIn, uh, there's a dazzling line. It says that you get paid for your value and not your time. And uh, I hear your thoughts and I see the value, uh, you know, some of your opinions and statements have been uh, creating. How do you feel? I mean, I know as a lawyer, as a consultant, Probably this is something which we would not want to agree to on the hindsight. But yeah, that's a strong statement to have. You get paid for your value and not for your time. So what do you feel no, about I, it? And you know, maybe close wrote, uh, our I conversation on that note. No, I wrote it because I, I get paid by the hour. Okay, I don't get a salary. Okay, I get a, I get paid by the hour. I get paid by the work that I do. And most often, you know that we bill according to the time that is spent. Okay. 
and i realize that uh, there are people who are taking uh, people for a walk up the garden path and that is why i wrote that you should get paid for your value not for the time and if you can bring some value to the table that is what you should charge for not for just sitting and warming some chairs so that is why i wrote it and i know that you know some people didn't like it and uh, some people actually called me and told me you are a person who gets paid by the hour and uh, you are writing this i said no I'm, i mean it's my opinion and i have a right to say that and you have a right to protect me if somebody attacks me that i have a right to say it that's what we call as freedom of expression you know freedom of speech Uh, so thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts and your time with us today i am I'm pretty sure that our viewers must have enjoyed this entire conversation and uh, <laughs> i'm i'm in, in i i know i heard you in earlier in this conversation that you know you're open for people reaching you out on uh, uh whatsapp first and then maybe you know put on a call if even if they have like generally chit chat or they want to have uh, have a discussion on any of the issues so uh viewers sure. please feel yeah, free to they? ping us for sir's phone number yeah you can follow uh just saying or no, only thing, only thing that i want to tell my students is that i if i meet you now i won't be able to recognize you and i would actually like you to come up to me and say that look i am so and so i told you taught me and you know nice meeting you but there are some people who walk up to me look at me and then say you don't remember me i'm talking about i must have taught in my life about 6 to 8000 students and if you tell me i can't, you don't remember me i'm shocked <laughs> i feel bad but i try to come out of it by you know somewhere oh i say oh okay i i remember no you come up to me and tell me you taught me and uh, i'm sorry so and that's fine I'm i mean thank you sir so maybe you know we'll we'll uh, you know that no that is very well uh, noted and maybe next time i hope that i will you know come to you and say that hi sir <laughs> maybe yeah. you remember me or not but you no, know i what? remember the vip i know i remember all my vips all those people who have uh, sat on the first row who am i who i made as vips i called them up and made them sit in i remember all of them i remember the people who have had arguments with me i remember all the people who threw out of class and they became my close friends and actually after the classes were over they actually took me out for a drink <laughs> and uh, you know the vips used to always take me out and say that okay fine sir are humko pata nahi tha ki aap you know you are fun uh, we thought we were very serious and that's what everybody says because you know you seniors will tell the juniors are wo jo aa raha hai daade wala be very careful <laughs> phone you don't take a mobile to class don't yawn in the class and don't doze off in the class you are gone and you know when i go to the class on the very first day and i look at the juniors all of them are looking at me as if my god this guy is going to ha- really harass us then i ask them do you know me you know in one particular class somebody told me why don't you introduce yourself i said i don't need to introduce i think the seniors have already done enough so that is how it is anyway thank you for having thank me you. and uh, i think in the first initial few stages there was a glitch for which i apologize and it was nice talking to all of i mean talking to you deepika and uh, to all the students who are listening you, to sir. me thank you for this opportunity and uh, wish you all the best thank uh, you have a thank good you very much. out there wherever you are and i am going to have a good night good so, night sir thank you very much thank you very much So today we conclude a great session uh, with uh, Professor Lionel Arhana. I hope all of you must have enjoyed this conversation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ping us, and we can probably take it up with the professor, or maybe you know you can directly reach him out. Ping us for his phone numbers, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel. More of content coming up very soon. Thank you very much. Join us for roll call next episode one, season five, uh, next week. Thank you very much. Bye.